And joining us live is Afolabi Akinro Gunde, past sector expert, and still in the studio is Libros uh, Oshoma, both of us who have this conversation. All right, let's continue this conversation with Libros and see if we can establish contact with him. What's your thought? Are you happy with the past situation in Nigeria? <laughs> I, it looks like I'm, <laughs> am I asking the obvious? <laughs> is there anybody in Nigeria that is happy with the past situation in Nigeria? It's unfortunate. Um, very, very unfortunate. And then, you know, the, the day you are happy that you've had, you know, constant power supply for maybe 12 hours a day, uh, and then you try to praise the power, um, um, the generation companies, somebody somewhere very close to you is telling <laughs> you that they've not, not had power for like seven days in a week. So mm. it is that bad. And um, there is no way you can develop any country or any anywhere without you know power, without electricity these days, because almost everything that we do mm -hmm. here now, you're running on power, you, you know, and it's so bad that uh, people now have to, you know, create all sorts of, um, you know, improvisation, a situation where you have generator, you have an inverter, you have solar, you know, all in one, one home. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's um, ordinarily, generator was supposed to be on standby. But in Nigeria, for most homes, the um, uh, PHCN is on standby while they run consistently mm. on generator. And so that's why, for me, nobody in Nigeria is happy. And uh, this is not the first time. We've had a situation where we took loans before to revitalize the power sector. In Obasanjo's um, time, I remember in, um, in February, uh, February 2007, the then Minister for Information, Frank Wake Jr., you know, was on air. He was everywhere telling Nigerians that from August 2007, power failure in Nigeria will be a thing of the past. And, but when they left, people discovered that they spent $16 billion, you know, buying darkness. And then, uh, Gulag Jonathan's time, you know, Gujaradua, he was, um, um, the minister, then Minister for Power also said that, um, uh, at the beginning of the year, he said that by December, that you know our power generation would have um, increased tremendously. And by October, when there was nothing in, on ground to actually show that we are moving in that direction, the government now said no. What they meant was that they would have the capacity mm -hmm. to generate. It became a question of semantics, uh, and and so uh, I'm not I'm not one to be carried away when we are giving loans like this mm -hmm. uh, because I've seen situations where we have taken loans before and, nothing to show and for not it. properly utilized it. So I want a situation where, you know, truly, before we even hear of the loan, would have seen tremendous improvement in our power generation and distribution All right. uh, for um, power in Nigeria. And that would be difficult to get people to invest in the power sector. And so that had been back and forth. Uh, because also you find out that some others have complained that, you know, with the unbundling of the past sector, that some, most of these uh, generating companies were, you know, handed over, um, um, distribution companies were handed over to cronies. Mm. And, and so that also had been one argument. The chicken, which one comes first? Is it the chicken or the egg? egg. And so some have argued that if there is constant power, that people will appropriate, will ordinarily want to pay for power, constant power. Meter them. The moment you're able to meter everybody, then I should be able to measure what I consume. While others have argued that no, let's have appropriate pricing, mm -hmm. and that would encourage investment in the sector. But the gap in between is that you still have, you know, a percentage, more than 45% of Nigerians that are without meter, that are paying estimated billing. And so, if you increase the tariff, how do you now, you know, build such a person? Somebody who does not have light and he gets, you know, um, estimated billing for the whole of March, April, May. Mm -hmm. My office was on lockdown, but I yes, was getting bills of 40,000 Naira, you know, for an office I wasn't using. There was no power, you know, and yet I was getting, you know, such estimated bills. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the challenges also that government actually needs to look at in, in fixing you know, the past sector, even though government over the years had consistently insisted that the past, uh, the distribution companies should meter houses. But the situation where they fail to meter, what are the penalties, right. you know? So let, let, let's, let's speak to Afalabi now and see, hear his thoughts. Good morning, Afalabi. Hello, Afalabi, you are live on the news. Can you hear me? 
I can hear you clearly. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Perfect. Thank you for joining us. We apologize for uh, the network issues. Now, let's go straight into the matter on electricity. We read that the World Bank has approved $750 million uh, credit uh, to support uh, support rather for Nigeria's power sector, saying that the country loses about $28 billion uh, annually to power shortages. This isn't news. I mean, we have heard this over and over again that our power sector is wasteful and ineffective. Why are we needing the World Bank to spell it out now? Well, um, it, it's clear to us that we, we, everybody knows what the challenge is for the power sector. I think the World Bank has, um, has been given advice over the decades. Um, the AFDB has been given advice. A lot of Nigeria's development partners have been given advice. Um, the challenge has always been how to, how to prioritize and, um, and apply the rules and, and make the right choices over the last um, at least 25, 25, 30 years in the power sector. So, so I think if you sit down and ask any expert in the sector, everybody knows what the challenge is. Um, but 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 the but the but the core thing really has been has been um, having the political will, and being and being deliberate about about having a sustained policy to to actually move the sector forward. Just before you came on, uh, Libros is in studio, uh, Libros Oshoma. We've been trying to also wrap our heads around this. You know, why we get loans all the time and we don't seem to have a result. We don't seem to see where this is going into. Now, is this $750 million credit the answer that we need, finally, to solve the problem of electricity shortage in Nigeria? Well, um, I think the key thing really is going to be what is the strategy. Um, your strategy is what is going to more or less underpin your actions, the loans you take, and the activities that you that you that you undertake. So, so, so really, the, the question is going is to ask um, what is the federal government strategy, and the government's core strategy basically is to work with the system in place to optimize um, as much as possible the elements of the value chain which it still has control and which have served more or less as a, as choke points for the growth of the sector. As you know, we've got, we have got generating capacity that is lying and idle because transmission capacity does not exist. Our transmission, as our transmission systems cannot take more than four, four, four to five gigawatts, and we can generate a lot more than that. And, 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 and so no matter how much power you generate, you cannot transmit more than that four or five gigawatts in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. so, so really, the core question is going to be, what is the commercial structure for, for the sector? What is the government going to borrow that money for? And how sustainable is that structure going forward? Mm -hmm. Especially, number one, the internal, the internal consistencies of it, and also whether the governments that will succeed this government will continue along that line. So, so, so I think those are the core things. Everything that we need to, have to effectively make the sector work in Nigeria are in place. Uh, the MITO, the MITO multi-year tariff order was put in place by the um, Obasanjo administration well over a decade ago. We have a process for, for increasing tariffs. We, we, the gas master plan was put in place by the Ministry of Petroleum well over a decade ago. That, that, has, all, that has also been a work in progress because mm -hmm. obviously most of the power plants we have in Nigeria are gas-based. Gas they need gas as fuel. Uh, pipeline, pipeline work is also going. But the challenge has always been how to work this over the years, how to consistently manage this. You have a NERC more or less that doesn't affect the mito order as needed. Because, for very, because of various reasons which we will not get into here. And so it continues to be a challenge to see how the, how the sector works. Mm. And, because of, and because of all of those issues, we continue to, 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 to wallow at 5 gigawatts for 200 million people, while South Africa has 50 gigawatts for 58 million people, making sure that the average South African gets 35 times more power than the average Nigerian. That's unfortunate. So, um, it is, it, is, it is a major challenge. The government continues to invest, but the challenge is how workable is the, commerce, is the commercial construct. All right, Akala, before system, I let you go, uh, before I let yeah. you go, in the same breath, we read about Jenkos that are not meeting their targets. And we are also talking about the challenges that we have, how crucial it is to sustain all of these efforts. What will be done to build in accountability and transparency in the system? Well, same thing is, um, I think all of the all of the elements that need that, that that are required for the system to work are in place. The key thing, basically, 
that, that, that I believe we need. Everybody will say cost reflective tariffs. We need to have cost reflective tariffs. But I think the most important thing also is for the NEC to be independent. We need to have a regulatory commission who, that, that can throw the book at, at various players in the, in the sector and let them know that, yes, there is somebody who is actually enforcing the rules in this space. So what we have is people are breaking the rules and they are getting away with it. Nobody is getting sanctions. Nobody, no, no licenses are being revoked. Nothing has happened. So if, uh, if, there is, if there is no law and no law is being enforced, people have no, people have no incentive to follow the law. Right. People have no incentive to live by the contract we've signed mm -hmm. by, with, with the various parties. So whether those parties are government-owned, whether they're the Jenkos, whether, the, whether it's NBET, whether it's the Ministry of Power, whether it's the Discos, I think we need to sit down and actually ha and ensure that we have an independent NEC. And once that NEC w watches over the, the sector and does what it's supposed to do, then the sector would work. All right. Thank you so very much, Afolabi, who's a power sector, for coming on the show and sharing your thoughts there. Do keep safe out there. Thank you. All right. Uh, Libros, you did not quite agree. So what's, what's the difference? Very quickly. I, I do not agree that um, we have everything that we need to make the power sector work. Okay. Um, because also, even though Afolabi had said that we have everything, but he also complained mm -hmm. that the neck you know, is not independent. So that's one problem. And then secondly, he also pointed out transmission. If we do not have the appropriate transmitting equipment to transmit, even if we generate 10,000 megawatts, we are still going to transmit 4,000 megawatts. That's a big problem. So nobody's looking at it. And that's why people are saying that, look, you generate who evacuates. And that at some point, government had to even put a 500 million, you know, bond down that, okay, if you are not able to meet up, for me, that's, you know, money in line waste. And now, talking about even generating, in your news this morning, out of the six generating plant, only two are meeting up to that's capacity. Mm. So that's another problem. And then you have a neck also that also is not on their neck to ensure that they meet capacity. What are the penalties mm. if you don't meet? And then lastly, what are, is our strategy for metering? We don't even have it. You know? So all of these are problems that if you do not you know, take cognizance of this problem and find a an appropriate, you know, to use this word, strategy to solving them, mm -hmm. you're just going to go around in circles. So it's not that, if you can say we have the regulations in place, but whether we have everything on ground to solve the problem, it's a tall order. Right. The, the issues are quite complex. Yeah. All right. The news will continue after this short break. Please stay with us.